What is going on guys? Baz here from Beckett Boy, back again with another video. Today's video, we are going to highlight and showcase a couple of really uh, interesting developments. CGA versus PSA, where it stacks up in some recent comps. If you're still stuck on the fence about using CGA for uh, uh, lower to, to mid tier stuff, uh, particularly NBA basketball cards, um, then this video is definitely for you. So right now, if you're an Australian punter and you like to get your cards graded for either PCing or resale, then this video is definitely for you because it'll show you something that you can compete with the American graders if you want to get your cards graded locally. Just want a big shout out to Mark for uh, first bringing this to my attention when he made a, a sale on eBay, um, a CGA graded slab, uh, it was a CGA 10 and it went for a lot higher than what he expected for in an auction. Uh, we've seen a couple of cases of this, I'm going to use that in a case study that, that you guys can actually see for yourselves. And then you guys can obviously make your own determination of whether or not you will use CGA versus PSA. Uh, but this will definitely open your eyes a little bit more to the strength of the current Australian marketplace and how we've definitely seen a bit of a shift in the market away from PSA uh, towards CGA in terms of uh, NBA basketball. <laughs> it any further guys if you're loving the content don't forget to like comment and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already but even just dropping a like and a comment would be fantastic definitely helps the algorithm and uh, and helps the channel grow all right guys so the first card that we're going to look at here is the uh, mosaic lamello ball nba debut pink rookie card now this one here is quite obscure in the pricing it really is so the first one you can see there uh, and i'm using 130 point um the website.com to to get the comps here which lists all the all the sold recent sold um listings first one is an sgc 10 uh, which sold for 26 us dollars all the prices are in uh, in us uh, and that was an auction and it went for 14 bids and that was sold uh, november 1 so just a few weeks ago second one sold on the same day cga the exact same card cga 10 so the equivalent in grading and it sold for 195 dollars or 130 us best offer accepted uh, you can see clearly that's a, a massive, massive, it's over a $100 difference. And then if you shift down one more level to the PSA 10 version, which went for $52 US, uh, and you can, you can clearly see. Now, we're on the second one where it says 195 AUD, you can probably see that that is in AUD compared to the others being in US dollars. That means that that was an Australian buyer, and that's probably a big hint as to why the market shift is the way it is so the other cards listed there you've got two sgc 10s one at 26 dollars and one at 46 on the the fourth one there and then the psa 10 went for 52 so 46 and 52 it's about about pretty even between a psa 10 and sgc 10 right now but as you can see the australians are now shifting uh and and that's clearly a market trend shift, and I'm going to point out why. And you're probably going to see more of this. Uh, one, these guys can buy the cards graded here and not have to wait for shipping or any of that sort of stuff. And two, 
there, I think there's a level of trust that has gone shifted away from the American graders, uh, PSA, particularly uh, during the COVID time and after that, you know, we, we, you're waiting for 12 months plus for your cards. I think that left a bit of a taste in a lot of the Australian marketplace mouth because there was, you know, literally thousands of customers that had sent cards across the states and just had no idea when they were going to get them back. You know, you're talking about tens of thousands of, you know, millions of cards. There really was. Uh, I was one of those people, and I had about four orders that were over there. I think three of them I didn't. Three of them took 12 months plus, which was crazy. Um, so now, I mean, if if someone can sell it for nearly $200 versus 50, and not have to wait, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer. Uh, so you might be thinking that that's a one-off, and I'm gonna show you that it's not uh, so just let me bring up this next one so we've got our number two on the case study which is the ja morant uh, panini 2019 to 20 chronicles essentials pink rookie card now we've got a cga 10 and a psa 10 exactly the same card the picture is not very good the guy that sold the psa one is uh is uh you know not the best but you can see there just four days apart they were both auctions and the the cga 10 has out performed outbidded by four bids so that's that's quite a strong point but also um outperformed by you know roughly four and a half dollars us so there's a couple of things to note there, um, and that's both in US dollars. So it's a one for one. That's pretty close, um, which shows a lot of strength to CGA, which is definitely starting to hold up. Um, and that's you know a a, a, J, a, a Marant rookie. So um, I mean you could you could look up more and and find out more of these, but this is you know real real um, a real eye opener especially for the the trading card marketplace in australia um, with graded cards in particular and we'll look at the final one so our case study number three is the michael jordan fleer 9192 and this was a cga 9.5 so a gem mint not even a 10 so it's I couldn't find any tens at all with uh, in, in recent comps. There were some nines, a HGA eight point five, and a seven. Uh, now the eight point five HGA went for twelve dollars US on a fixed sale price. Uh, the PSA nine went for just on thirty dollars US, a so twenty nine ninety five. Best offer accepted. Uh, these were all within days apart. Um, I think yeah, the three of them were on the 16th of November and one was on the 18th. So this is only a few days ago, so this is really recent. And then the PSA 7 went for about 17 US. And then unbelievably, the CGA 9.5 has absolutely dominated all of those and gone for 199 so nearly 200 bucks Australian. Uh, which is 133 US dollars. So there's a clear, clear shift, at least in the Australian marketplace. Now, you know, Americans may not pay the money to get CGA graded slabs sent over, but they they may. We, you know, we we can't prove that they won't. Um, have I ever sold a CGA slab to an American? No, I have not. I've sold plenty of slabbed cards to the Americans. But they've always been, uh, you know, BGS or, uh, or SGC or PSA, so that's really, really significant. I think the Michael Jordan one is is really, really, really big. Um, I don't think with that big of a market gap in price, would that happen consistently? Probably not. And I don't know if it's a true indication of market value for that that card, but it does show that buyers are prepared to pay for top grading from CGA. That's clearly what it shows. Um, it doesn't necessarily reflect the true value because I've purchased that card before. At a, you know, It's a pretty cheap card, to be honest. Um, so someone's added the value on with the CGA 9.5, obviously. 
Um, but yeah, that wraps up the case studies for today, guys. Hopefully that's brought some value um, and a little bit of sort of eye-opening and awareness around the CGA marketplace now, at least in Australia, uh, and what, what has been happening. You, we could probably start to see this a little bit more regularly. And shout out to Mark too for pointing this out to me. It was one of his cards, um, I think it was the, the JA, the Jamarant, that, um, that went. And I think he had another one, a LeBron, I think, that also performed pretty strongly. Um, and he was the one that brought that to my attention. And I just sort of, you know, punched in a few names and, and grade numbers. And, you know, it wasn't difficult to find that it had been, you know, it wasn't an isolated case. It, it had happened, um, well, I wouldn't say frequently, but it is starting to become a bit of a market trend, at least in Australia, for people to to sway towards CGA. So, you know, they have definitely um, made a big impression uh, um, in this country uh, as to buyers now selecting them over the traditional PSA, BGS and SGC. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for more of this, guys, but this was something different. I thought I'd just highlight that uh, just to bring about some awareness and, and a bit more sort of market positivity and strength if you're wondering about you know, should I grade some of my lower tiered NBA stuff with CGA? I think the answer is definitely yes. And there's definitely a strong market here for it. And that, you know, the eBay eBay leaves these these prints where we can go back and, and check pricing and we can actually confirm whether or not people will buy the stuff. So um, heads up, yes, your, uh, your stuff will sell if you choose to grade it and it performs well. So... That is it for today, guys. Uh, until the next one, peace.